Okay. It's rolling. That toward it? We're moving right along. Deep, deep, deep. Nairs in the gallery, please. Uh, Sucker Creek Powwow. This is an addition to the agenda. <laughs> uh, if you had a chance to read it, it's an invitation to their powwow. September 5th, 6th, or 7th. I make a motion that Council approve the Mayor or designate to attend the Sucker Creek Powwow being held on September 5th, 6th, and 7th in Sucker Creek First Nation. Comments, questions? I will be available on the 6th, I believe. And I know someone who will escort me again. Excellent. <laughs> yes. The 6th or the 7th? I'll be attending on the Saturday regardless. Okay. I'll be there. All in favor? This motion is carried. Next item of business is the Public Works Report. No, no, no. I no. The joint use was 5B4. After that. Oh, another one of those. Yeah. Yep. Uh, RFD. Yep, Recreation Joint Use Agreement. Would you like to speak to that? Would you like to make the motion, Mr. Amter, Councillor Amter, and then speak to it? No? Would somebody like to make that motion? I make a motion that Council serve notice to the Town of High Prairie, the High Prairie School Division Number 48, and the Holy Family Cross Regional Division Number 37 to terminate the agreement prior to September 1st. I don't think it could be 2014 because it has to give a year's notice. Terminate the agreement prior to, yeah, 2015. 2015. I don't think I have the letter that she wrote. So we give notice and then it enters the one year uh, review. Yes. Okay. 2014. 2014 in accordance with section 14. This agreement shall be in effect from September 1st, 1999, and thereafter will continue in effect from year to year. This agreement may be terminated by any party to this agreement by giving one year's written notice of its intention to do so, with such notice to be given on or before the first day of September of any year. So we require to give notice this year in order to end it for next September. Do you want to it's explain a, uh, it a bit? Because it's not, it's not the word withdrawal necessary. Th this is a difficult one, very difficult. It is a social development program. Uh, the agreement as it stands right now is joint use. Um, the, the two school divisions can access the rec facilities. Uh, they give a phone call, they coordinate. Hopefully they show up. Most times they do show up. Sometimes they don't. It does happen. And uh, there's no fee. So if they want to use the ice rink, if they want to use the pool, I think there's, uh, a, there is a charge for the pool if it's past so many lifeguards. I don't have the agreement in front of me, sorry. Um, and then if communities or uh, if groups from the town would like to access the school gymnasiums, uh, there is an administration fee. Uh, for registering it and that's it so if the badminton club wants to call in and use st andrew's gymnasium on this night this night this night whatever schedule it is the rec department takes that request not the school then they hand it off to the school to say what dates are appropriate what aren't what would you like to do the school okays or not okays the school has an insurance program for those everything else brings it back we bring it back to the people they pay an administration fee and that's it. Um, the usage of the, it, it, it changed a few years ago where there used to be a calculation system based on cost or, and it related to number of units to bring it to a common level. So if you use the pool, one person was seven units, used in gymnasium, one person, or, or one hour was seven units, used in gymnasium, one hour is one hour because they're associated costs. The school has to have a maintenance worker there to let you in so you can access the gym. Uh, if you use the pool, uh, one, uh, we have to have so many lifeguards uh, for so many hours with breaks and everything else in between. So there is an added cost. Uh, same with the hockey <coughs> ring, or the ice surfaces. If you want to use them, I think it's like four hours to one hour of a gym. 
And it used to be that it was calculated out at the end of the year and then uh, funds that have been received would be reallocated reall to compensate. Then it was decided, well, why are we tracking this? This is for the growth and development of the children. It's positive and um, let's no longer charge. Let's, let's just do a f straight swap, um, which is a wonderful program. And really, when you look at it, it is the tax dollars that are funding the REC and it's the tax dollars that fund the education system that would, we would end up charging. The problem come in is the usage has really grown in the last few years since there's no more reallocating of funds. So the cost to the REC has increased. And it's not all students or their parents that actually pay taxes to the two municipalities involved. So even though it's funded through the taxpayers, it's not all funded the same. So what we'd like to do, uh, we tried to enter into a discussion about it. Um, it didn't go very well. So the recommendation from the rec director at the time was, well, let's terminate it, which will then mean now we have one year to sort it out or it's done. Uh, according to school systems, it is the program that all other school divisions love and wish they had. And I'm in agreement because if I'm peace school system and I have to pay $100 per that hour for the pool and you get it for free, I love that idea. <laughs> you know, it's just where does it allocate? So it's a catch-22 for me though because I love the students having that access. And if we cancel it, there's going to be less activity. But what equates? Where is the check and balance system, right? High taxes in town. Well, what do we do? Difficult decision. Councillor Danaka? Um, <clears throat> I just have a question. Under the background proposal, it says town of High Prairie, the MD, High Prairie School Divisions, etc. But in the recommendations, it's to serve notice to the town and the school divisions. But the MD is not included in that serving of notice? I think the MD has the same thing to bring forward. Like, I'm bringing you this as oh, the back on okay. that board. Okay, okay. And I someone understand. from the MD is bringing it to their board. Okay. Okay. I just needed that clarification. Thank you. Okay. So, it's, it's not a definitively we are pulling out. But we have to... We have to give the notice, and now we have a whole year to, to work with the school divisions to get this figured out as to what is fair and equitable for all of the partners. <coughs> and to get input from the taxpayers. Yeah. If they're fine with this, well then, I can't lower taxes in that area. Okay. So, if anybody questions you want it, no, we, we actually do support the joint use agreement. But we want a, the, the MD and the Town High Prairie are both looking for a bit more um, e equality. I, I understand the equality issue and something that needs to, to be worked out. So that I see. I'm not sure why September 1 and it's, it's all of a sudden an urgent pressing item that gets added on here and it's a big decision with no forethought. I'm wondering why that date has been brought up. Um, according to the agreement, in order to give notice, you have to do it by September 1st. If we don't give notice by this September 1st, it, as soon as it's September 2nd, it, it then doesn't give notice till the following September. So then it's another year from there. Mm -hmm. So it'd be 2016 instead of 2015 when it would actually cancel. So it'd be a two-year discussion instead of one. Okay. Councillor Long? So how long have you been in negotiation with the school district, both Catholic and public, to get to this stage now? Um, when did this all start to come to be and when did it start to unravel? Yeah, We've had uh, two meetings. Um, that board has had two meetings, or committee. Um, after the first meeting, the rec board which are the representatives that are directly on that committee, um, had a lengthy discussion with our rec director and, and it was brought to our attention that it is quite costly for us and that there is a rising cost. So then we made a follow meeting to have an in-depth discussion. 
Now, in that meeting, there's uh, supposed to be um, four voting members, uh, two from the MD, two from the town, two from the high priest school division, two from the Holy Family. Um, there was the acting rec director and myself, and there were nine other people in the room. Unfortunately, nobody else uh, attended from the MD or from the town. They were unavailable. Um, so not only were there just the four voting members, there were additional for input, which is great. But it was difficult to broach this subject when we did have a quorum of five and four of them were from the school divisions. And we did broach it and we did have a, light, a, light, a good discussion on it, but both school divisions were strong in favor of not making any changes. They really enjoy it as it is. Mm -hmm. And I can see their side, I really do. And I'm in a bit of a conflict because my wife works for one of them. Right? So it's a really touchy subject for me. Uh, and my children enjoy it. I'm a taxpayer, I'm all for it, but I'm not all the taxpayers. And when I want to balance a book at the rec, and when I come back and say I want to balance books here and I want to drive down costs, it doesn't matter if I'm for it or not, I still got to drive it down. Right? In answer to when did it start, I believe it started in about April. Our first meeting, actually, I think it was before that even. So, you know, it's yeah, it's been it churning along and, yeah. and gathering more information because we came in basically not understanding the agreement, but the more we dug into it, the more we got the history of, okay, it went from cost to units, and then the units are out of whack. So, and, and then... Participation the, levels rose drastically. And then the more more uh, the swimming pool came on, then the Gordon Buchanan Center came on, so we're adding more facilities. Yep. Councillor Panasic. When we met with the High Prairie School Division, this, this joint use agreement was brought up and they mentioned the number of units and they also had a report, because they were still doing a report, that said that the number of units uh, was fairly close to balancing. Like, uh, and I don't know if the units are being allocated fairly, but I know they were, like you had mentioned, there was more waiting for the pool than there was for this, and it, and it was balancing. Well, that's because the pool is only three units, as opposed to a gym for one unit. But if you go back and think that the units should be reflecting cost, yeah. how much cost is associated to opening a gym and letting the volleyball or the badminton players uh, work as opposed to the swimming pool who has <coughs> the, the heating, the, the maintenance, the lifeguard, the staffing. Would you say it's three to one or would you say it's seven to one? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it's that's that's when you say it's very it's, even. It's a lifeguard yeah, exactly. versus someone yes. else, right? Like, because I mean, it's, it's heated anyways and yeah. the difference of yeah. the lights but it is the manpower that's got to be there and the more people you might have to have two or three lifeguards which is a lot different than having one custodial staff open and close the door I mean yeah. okay the things to Amter? ponder are the, the custodian staff can open the door and run off and continue with their normal job yeah there is not a direct cost whereas a lifeguard is a direct cost because now you have to have that lifeguard there works 45 minutes every hour they have to have a 15 minute break in order to keep their attention span other regulations. It's also an hour now where you've lost revenue, where you can't rent it to some other private entity or anything like that. So there are direct costs substantially higher. It, it, but it, and how to do those calculations? They came up with a formula before, and that took forever to come up with. And it, it's going to be a not fun committee. Can, one more? Yeah, sorry. What this is boiling down to is we're wanting to make notice of cancelling this so that we can negotiate a better one and that's what we want to do and I'm hearing that nobody wants to enter into the negotiations is that we can't do negotiations yeah. unless we make this motion uh, no we can enter into it but it's gonna put a finite timeline and say that yeah it actually has to be dealt with because right now it, it's an impasse you've got two from the MD two from the town two from the high priest school division, two from St. Andrews, which is a lovely board, right? You've got great representation, but if it's four versus four, it's dead. 
And I'm, I'm also not sure, the actual the joint use agreement, is it not expiring? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it might have been. I, I, don't quote me on that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look up my dates here. Okay. All right. So are there any other questions regarding this? Mr. Tomaco? So, so what is the strategy here? You want to terminate by September 1st, 2014, gives you one year to 2015. So in between that time, you hope to be able to negotiate something. So what happens when negotiations fail? Would that mean you're finally terminating? Then it's done. What, then it's done. That, that would be the indication that if we can't come to an agreement within a year, the agreement's done. Okay. Mr. Tamak was right. So it's just a bit of a cautionary note there is that what happens if? And it, and is it okay? Like are we okay with and are the taxpayers okay and the parents okay with having it terminated? It gives you a year to discuss with the taxpayers, with the parents, with the students, and it is a motion that can be rescinded, like I tried earlier. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyways, it, it's on the table. This is, uh, it's actually, even before we got on, the other, the other uh, groups were talking about um, digging further into this. It's not from team. the current board that it started prior to that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't think we have to read it back because it is right in front of you. So, all in favor of the termination? Opposed? And the motion is carried. And the next item then goes to the public works report. And I don't think we, oh, Mr. Martinson is here. Good. I had a couple questions, but we'll let some of the other people start first. Councilor Danaka, do you have any questions? Um, <clears throat> my qu one, one question. Um, ordered new runway light control system supplied by ADB Airfield Services. Was that a cost to us to replace it? It was, and it'll be, as a capital project, it'll be invoiced half back. Okay, that was my other question. Okay, we thank you. We have to do a credit app, and I checked with them on Monday. I phoned the lady in Ontario, because that's where they ordered it. So when I did the request for proposal, that was the cheapest uh, place to find the unit that we needed. And we have to do a credit app. So it, she said it's still in the process. They're still on order. And what is the cost of these lights? Um, it's around twenty-eight hundred dollars. Okay. It's a system that it's not the lights. Or the system, system, sorry. Light control system. system. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Long. I'm glad to see that uh, that the lift station is underway. How long are we looking at there? They figured. It'd be into December or something before December second. Year completion. Yeah. Good. We had that one, the 49th Street, the road by the hospital, and the sewage was doing all starting on the 18th. Great. Good job. Mr. <coughs> Panasic. Um, no, the only question I had, which is uh, just to educate me on, you, you hauled and spread two loads of millings. What are millings? I don't know. <laughs> Fresh asphalt. Oh, okay. And it packs, and we used to use dust control, but we quit using that for a number of years now. And it was spread out there before the millings. We did it on that road before, but they just laid down to nothing. And yeah, I do. The workers have some health issues regarding allergies to dust and that, so. Okay. Any other questions, Councillor Panasic? No. Councillor Emter? So when you um, spread the two loads of millings north of the seed cleaning plant uh, along the MD road? On a high road. It is? Because when I look at the map, it shows it as MD. On ours. Um, if, like, if, but it depends where you mean north. If right? you look at the address, it says 5980 56th Street. 
Oh. And that's the Gord Jack Gordon's residence. So that's oh, okay. spread from that line there. Down to the seat cleaning at the fifty six hundred fifty seven. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Um, and you answered the cost on the runway lights. Um, patched hole in walking trail north side of the Elks grounds. Elks grounds are in the MD? They are. So did we we're, build? We're still maintaining the, the walkway. Trails. Okay. Spraying them and for some reason when the uh, pressure line was put into, it was RJ Willis Cross building out there, we we ended up with a sinkhole on our walking trails. We built it twice already this year, so I don't know, we'll have to check into it to see what the problem is there. Have we ever approached the MD about paying for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? They're not interested? Even though it's in the MD? That's coming up in cost sharing. Yeah. Good. That's it. Street sweeping. <coughs> is your street sweeper fully mobile again? It is. I noticed that the... Are we Do, do we do highway two? We do, but it's on a request of proposals from transportation. What we do is we get a request from the contractor, and then they put in, we build them, and then they build transportation. So people have to complain to the contractor about how dirty the highway is? That's pretty much it. Can the town um, complain? You can. I think the town should complain about how dirty the highway is. We it's did do town. it once, and we went out to the MD office, broomed the islands out there, and swept the road. That one in 749, which is 48th Street, right out here, yeah. is also theirs too. So. Complaints. So, so the town will complain to Alberta Transportation, and if any citizens phone in, that might help too. Complaints yeah. to Rodney us. Johnson. Okay. Is What's his area? name? Rodney Johnson is our area rep. Rodney Johnson. For transportation and utility. Alberta infrastructure, I guess. Okay. Yes, sir. I know he's at station on Ivory here. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe Lansky, there was uh, water, and I think that complaint came to the uh, town. Anything happened uh, there? We resurfaced that with asphalt. Okay. Over a week ago. Good. To build the sidewalk up so there would be no standing water there. We haven't been back to landscape it yet, but... It's been looked after. It's in the works. Gar garbage receptacles for the skateboard park, are we getting the ones that are double, recycle, and waste? Uh, no, we're not. It's just all garbage. I ordered, I ordered three new receptacles probably three weeks ago now, and they're still on order. On order. Um, is that something that we should be looking at as um, in those parks, in our parks, is recycle? And waste? Well, I think it's commendable that we do it. We don't have a recycling program really or curbside pickup in our own town. But it, it's something that maybe the kids can utilize those funds for whatever, you know, for whatever society that's doing something else. Or <coughs> I just like them to, to pick up the garbage first. If they can recycle, that's even better. Who is picking that garbage up? Do you know? Tim Stokes is the contractor who has a Heart River housing. Okay, because. Heart River maintenance. Because I had heard there was a lady that was doing it every morning until those garbage cans get there. Well, they repositioned the garbage can there now the other day. Oh, okay. Until the two receptacles come in that we had planned on putting one on each side of the main entrance going into it. Oh. But they get. Up on the top. The I, I'm thinking that I think you should be talking to them and ask the kids where they want to put them because by the main entrance they're not going to go over there. <laughs> but anyways. The main entrance going from the sidewalk going to oh, the Oh, the little, the corner. No, not, no, no, it's not the corner. It's actually going on to the skateboard park. Because that would be There's fenced. a walkway from our walkway going across the park. Yeah. That joins the skateboard park and we're going to put one on each side of that. How are they getting onto that? Are they, oh, they, they come onto that by there, and then they sit up on the uh, skateboard, and then they huck everything behind them. Yeah. <coughs> Some nets there. <laughs> Get double duty. 
What's happening with the West Fraser Water and Sewer request? We have a meeting. With we have a meeting at 10 o'clock on Friday. I mean, thank you and uh, Vern for working hard on this. Uh, we contacted DCL Siemens uh, to get quotes regarding the sanitary and the water lines. And I called, uh, we had a conference call with Wayne Goodnight yesterday. He called this morning and he agreed to meet with us at 10 o'clock. And he said, I should say a big thank you to you and Vern for working so hard on this. So we're meeting with them on, at 10 o'clock Friday in my office. I'm not sure. Are the rest of the council aware of this? Can you bring the rest yeah. of the council up to date? I think it's been an ongoing issue. Is it the east? Or is it the east? I think a couple of years, west, a couple of years ago, there was an attempt to try to do local improvement to put sanitary and water lines there, but it failed because uh, maybe the cost was a little. Cost. Uh, yeah. So now uh, West Fraser is realizing that they don't have those things there and they are asking has to do the research in terms of the cost. Now we have to meet with them and let them know what it is, uh, what the cost is, and then uh, figure out how we move forward. It's about water line and the sewer, I mean the uh, sanitary line and the, and, the, and the water line in those areas. They're basically in, they can't get enough water, water yeah. for their mill right now. Water, yeah. They don't have enough flow there right now. Flow, yeah. And they're worried about fire protection also. Yeah. yeah. So, so with all of those concerns, then should we be looking at also talking and including in the negotiation of having them come into the town of High Prairie? I believe once everything we, is settled. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, administratively, we've talked to them. We know what the problem is. Uh, we'll talk to them on Friday, figure out exactly where they want to go. But there's a process for all of this in, our, in the town's perspective. Uh, with respect to local improvement issues, but that's neither here nor there. The main thing is to present them with what the cost is, what the situation is, and see where we go from there. But definitely, council will have to be in the loop as to what conversation has gone on. The MD of Big List is also inter interested because um, of the economics. Yeah, so somewhere along the line, it definitely has to come to council. But we want to talk, present information to them. They wanted to meet with us, we had the information. We'll present it to them and uh, let Council know as well. Councilor Hampton? So is it the west? West. It, 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 it's entirely past yeah. the river, everything? There is a building, potential building, or are we talking just down below here? Where is the mill? Here, here's the water, here's the mill. This is it. Here. In here? Yeah. And there was, a, there was a plan to come in across, underneath the railway tracks and into yeah. it, okay? Yeah. And that was the, right. what they were looking at. Right. Underneath the CN rail and then back in behind. And so we, right now we do have sewer uh, to the Buchanan truck shop no. in that area. We don't go past the river, do we? So it, it, it's going to be a large undertaking then. Okay. Right. Um, there's one other question. The weed control. What's yeah. happening with weed control? Councillor Long? You know, and I didn't pay a lot of attention to it until you started bringing it up. And now I drive by and I look at that site and it's a mess. And it's loaded with noxious weeds. I, I know the special council has sent letters to the property owners on the website. I know that for a fact. Because we, I have received complaints from the RCMP myself on property. Yeah. So either he gets it done or we get it done and bill him. It's, yeah, that's the alternative. How much longer do you know, Mr. Tamaklo? Do we have to wait? What do you suggest, though? I yeah. think he had to give him like two weeks to set up a time frame, and after the two weeks, then we can do it ourselves. Okay. And and the time frame should be just about up now. Good. Did he send out quite a few, I hope, because... I think he did. I mean, after Alan, Alan, right? Alan did, yeah. Yeah. Because over on the storage units in the yeah. O'Brien subdivision, that whole field is thistle. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's thistle over by um, Cornerstone. He's cut it, but uh, 
There's still thistle all through that. <coughs> and then up where the town shop is, there's a whole bank of it up there. I mean, this this really has gotten away. Cameron Hill as well. Right. Yeah. We should talk to Alain tomorrow, have a meeting. I'll check with him tomorrow and find out when, okay. when his time frame is up. <coughs> all right. So is there anything else regarding Public Works, Councillor Panasic? Just a question on, I, we got those three big projects on the go, is how are they progressing? Any? Very good. They're all on track and going good. Weather's, Weather, been, weather's good. been good. Touch wood, yeah. Okay. All right then, could we have a motion then to receive for information? Councillor Amter has made that motion. Thank you for attending, I appreciate that. All in favor? Let's carry. <coughs> Next item is the Lesser Slave Like Economic Alliance. There's a letter attached from the chair, Barry Shikawi. And they're asking for an alternate. Councillor Amter? Um, I would like to see either Councillor Carrier. Councillor Danaka or Councillor Panasic. Just looking at the number of committees we're on with alternates and numbers already. Um, sadly, Councillor Carrier is not here, so I'd like to know if either Councillor Danaka or Councillor Panasic would be interested in being the alt. Councillor Danaka. Um, I just. <coughs> When does when is the next LLSEA meeting? September 11th will okay. be the next one. But they usually meet the third Thursday of every month, and okay. they meet during the day. Okay, the day is not good for me. Okay. And my other comment regarding this is, being we're going into September, um, October we have another organizational meeting. Um, the committees will possibly be reassigned. Is there any point at this moment to um, list an alternate when we're going to be revamping the committee structure anyway? Yeah. Is my question. I know in other municipalities what usually happens is the alternate moves up to be the regular designee. And that gives them a little bit of uh, background before they actually arrive at a meeting if they've had a couple chances but on most of the ones that I've seen the um, the alternate receives all the information even though they don't attend the meeting so they're they're reading what's going on with the organization and so they're on the distribution list and helps somewhat there I, I actually don't see where the lesser slave like economic alliance minutes they're being received I believe by the town I haven't seen any. I haven't. <coughs> okay. Did you should make a note did then. Receive, did you get it? Pardon? Did you get it? She said we get it. Oh, okay. So they they could they should be distributed to I would think. Do they get distributed? They don't get distributed, do they? They are are they distributed? Okay. okay. Have you seen them? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Okay. They are on the new website under, like there is an LLSEA in a watershed and their minutes are there. Okay, good. <coughs> All right then. Um, so what was the decision then on this one? During the day it? doesn't work well for me. So, uh, and, I, and I don't think it's going to work well for Trevor either. No. no. But uh, um, I think that it's something we can, we can wait until the realignment of everything in October. Yeah. We start looking at who's sitting on what, what committees are going to be taken up, and and go from there. Okay. I, I know that just just one further comment on that is that um, there is a, another economic group that maybe we need to be involved in, and maybe I don't know if we should be involved in both or just one of them, because I know the MD belongs to another one. Preda. Yeah, so I, I don't know which one's better, but perhaps there's, we could look at which one's going to be the best fit for our town and, and work at that one, and I don't know the answer. That's actually a good idea, 
you could have the executive director of Prita come and make a presentation. Uh, the town of Manning has just joined Prita, and uh, they actually. Uh, they seem to be an um, enthusiastic and up-and-coming organization, so, you know. I mean, and if the MD of Big Lakes is a member, sometimes it's better. We're a close partner with them. That's why I was just wondering about that yep. one. I, I, I agree. All right. So, do we have a motion on this one? Oh, there was no motion. Councilor Amford. I make a motion uh, that we uh, table this meeting to the... Reorganizational meeting. Postpone. Postpone. You can table and recall it back. But we'll go with your postpone. <laughs> we we'll talk about this all the time. Okay, I will postpone this. Make a motion to postpone. Excuse me. Pardon? There's a. Sub. I don't know. The, no, sub. Councilor Empter, the council forward the legislative lay economic alliance request for an alternate representative to the 2014 organizational meeting. Sounds hunky dory. Hunky dory. All in favor? That motion is carried. Can I make another motion? Yes. That we invite Prita, uh, that we ask administration to invite Prita to make a presentation to council at, at their earliest convenience. Sure. Any comments? Questions? Um, now, we're running into this problem where he will come and it'll probably be more than five minutes or 15 minutes. So there's, <laughs> he's probably got about a half an hour presentation. Yeah, we'll talk to them and if we find that it's a, an extended period of time, they will have a special meeting before the regular council meeting. All right. If that would work for council. Because <coughs> we don't want to have to. Yeah.